Hello guys, HL here, coming to you with another World of Warship Split video. In today's video, we will be taking a look at 5 tips and tricks you can use to reach legend rank more easily. Before I start the video though, I just wanted to point out that 86% of you who are viewing my videos are not subscribed, so if your subscription button is still red, please don't forget to go down below and give it a click, I will be really grateful. So, back to topic. Why would you want to reach legend rank? Firstly, reaching legend rank feels good because it's literally you could say the highest rank and the best looking badge in the game. It is always a very nice feeling and a personal achievement let's say when you reach legend rank for the first time. Second reason will be that legend rank has better weekly and monthly rewards with things such as copper, free XP, and the experience and let's say I think silver boosters. So reaching legend rank is really rewarding if you can do it easily. For those of you who are watching this video, if you are not able to reach legend rank or find it very difficult, you are in the right place. So stick around and watch till the end as I definitely feel that you will find this video helpful. I also want to mention that that all of these tips and tricks are based on my own personal playstyle, my own opinions, and my own experiences. So if you guys have different tips and tricks or different opinions, I would like to hear of them. So don't forget to leave a comment down in the comment section down below. With all of this stuff out of the way, let's dive into tip number one. At tip number one is to get a high score. Firstly, I want to briefly explain how points are given in this game. If you capture a capture point, you gain points. Damage is also counted as points, so getting high damage will certainly give you a higher point count. The way this pointing works is that after you win or lose a match, you will be given a ranking within your team. And the higher your rank, the more trophies you are going to gain. So. If your team wins and you get the best score, which is the MVP, you will gain the most number of trophies. However, you can also still gain trophies even if your team loses by gaining high damage and capturing lots of points. So you can still be the MVP of the losing team. Keep in mind that being the person with the lowest damage on a winning team is not good either as this causes you to lose trophies. So sometimes the way I like to play the game, I know many of you guys would disagree, but please hear me out. In order to gain trophies, I use this play for score thing. So if I see my team is losing, like let's say they are not capturing the caps, they are getting killed or are just doing something stupid, I generally prefer to start playing for damage, which sometimes can be really selfish because I simply stop capturing objectives, start sniping kills and shooting whatever I can get the most damage on. However, I find this method very effective as the damage counts as points and often scoring the highest damage gives you trophies even if your team loses. This way, you don't lose trophies, you still can gain some and this will definitely help you reach legend league faster. Now you may ask. What are some ways to get more damage? And this will bring us to the next tip, which is tip number two, which is use battleships. Now, while I am aware that some of you guys also may disagree with this, as I am not saying that cruisers, carriers, destroyers, and stuff like that can't get high damage. Just that personally, I feel that it is easiest to get high damage using a battleship, as you can see in my Roma videos. Now why do I say the battleship is the easiest to deal high damage? Firstly, I feel that the battleship is pretty much the strongest in the game, it can f literally fight everything. Even if you get rushed by let's say an enemy battleship, battleship versus battleship, if you know what you are doing, the chance of winning is still very high. In a battleship versus cruiser situation, you are almost guaranteed a win as the cruiser pretty much will just get clapped. Carriers also can wipe you with one row of torps, like destroyers will be wiped by Saipan immediately or pretty much immediately, 
That is not really possible as the battleship has a lot of health. I find destroyers hard to get high score consistently as sometimes the carrier, as I said, keeps spotting you, keeps targeting and wiping you, or sometimes you run into a Wooster or a Venezia. And I don't mean that you rush straight into it, but sometimes they just pop up and you get caught off guard. Or sometimes you just keep being spotted and don't have a chance to get close enough to drop tops or use your guns. So basically, that supports my theory of using battleships. And I also did not mention how you can deal with destroyers easily in battleships. Like in ships like Roma, you can easily switch to HE, or as you should do with all battleships facing destroyers, you could switch to HE and you can blast the destroyer out of the match quickly if you know what you are doing. So this basically is the reason why I like to choose battleships. Battleships can also let you carry the entire team because of their guns, so if you can shoot them accurately or RNG blesses you, you can easily sit out lots of ships and wipe them from the game, such as wiping the Amalfi so your friendly cruisers or friendly sorry, I mean friendly destroyers can move into top, or wiping the destroyers so your battleships can help. And again I know it sounds weird that you are using a battleship to wipe a destroyer, but it can be done. So that's basically why I'm saying the battleship to me it's one of the most versatile ships in the game and that basically lets me get more trophies easily as the battleship backs up tip number one which is get a high score and by that I mean mainly scoring high damage if you get torped by a destroyer in a battleship you usually can eat quite a few torps so even if you do accidentally run into a wall of torpedoes you have a chance of surviving most of the time as long as you don't run into something like a shimakaze with 15 torpedoes and your ship has lots of health left this allows you to stay in the game longer and continue dealing damage doing objectives and basically doing everything you can to increase your score and let you get more trophies for tip number three i would say to play at tier eight now 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 before you start blasting me in the comments. I want to point out that playing at any tier can be tier 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, 3, any tier is good or if it works for you but and when I say playing at tier 8 it's just my personal opinion. So why do I say this? To me the tier 8 is a good tier because let's see trophy gains per match. If you win a match in let's say a tier 5 or tier 6 battle, you probably get, if I'm not mistaken, about 100 trophies, which while it's easier to win down there in some situations, the number of trophies gained is pretty few, so you will find it pretty hard to reach Legend League quickly. Playing at tier 9 and 10 can be really rewarding if you can keep begging those wins, as you can easily get, what, 200 trophies, but there's many teams of very skilled players at 9 and 10 and when playing tier 9 ships you get up tier or I mean bottom tier and end up fighting tier 10s more than you get to fight tier 8 so I would say playing tier 9 is not the most advisable thing the reason why I find tier 8 the best is because tier 8 ships can comfortably fight tier 7s that's for sure and you can comfortably fight tier 9s in most cases as compared with a tier 9 ship trying to fight a tier 10. The number of trophies gained at tier 8 if you win is also pretty high. It's not like the highest like a tier 10, but it strikes a good balance of you don't lose too many trophies if you lose and you gain a fair number of trophies if you win, allowing you to reach Legend League more quickly. I may also be saying this because one of my favorite ships to use, as you can probably see from the videos or the videos I uploaded lately, involves Roma. And it is a tier 8 ship, so there is another reason why I like to play at tier 8. At tip number 4 is to squad with friends. Well, firstly, squatting with friends generally, you guys will be able to work better as a team and support each other when capturing objectives. As an example, you could say something like two ships capture the objective and the other battleship behind helps watch out and shoot enemies who are trying to flank. 
The carrier can also help spot, so it prevents you from being yoloed by a DD. I also want to mention that there are some things to take note when squatting as it is possible to squat wrongly and end up in a disadvantaged match as many beginners including me when I first started playing have done. Firstly, do not squat with different tiered ships other than CVs. Firstly, if you are squatting with a destroyer, a cruiser or a battleship, stick to a fixed tier like let's say all of you do tier 6 and tier 6 only. This is because if you squat with something like let's say a 6, you are using a tier 6 battleship and your teammate is using a tier 7, there is a chance that instead of ending up in a match where there's only tier 6 and 7 ships, your tier 7 teammate causes you to go into a match with tier 7 and 8 ships. So being a tier 6 ship fighting against tier 8 ships will be very disadvantaged. So that is the biggest mistake many new players commit, so don't do that. An exception can be given when it comes to CVs or aircraft carriers. Basically, if you are squatting with a carrier, try to choose a carrier. I prefer to get a carrier that is one tier lower than the tier you are playing at. So let's say you are playing the Iowa at tier 9, you get an Enterprise which is tier 8. This basically in let's say 98 or 99% of cases allows you to be top tier in battles so you don't end up in a 9 and 10 match because the CV will cap the match level so you can only be in 8 and 9. However, do not choose a CV that is a tier higher than the battleship or the ship you are using as it will cause the same scenario mentioned above which means you won't just be bottom tier, you will be double bottom tier which puts you at a strong disadvantage as you will most likely get killed straight away. Speaking of teammates, I also want to give a huge shout out and thank you to my teammates Temujin, Funny Bean, TRB Slavomir, and Shikikan. You guys are awesome. I love playing with you guys as we always support each other and we win almost every match. And basically, we work well together. For the rest of you who I have played with, some of you I don't play with you so often, so I'm very sorry that I may not be able to remember your name at this moment, but if you are watching, Thank you for working together. I hope to continue being able to play with you in the future. At last, we have tip number 5 which is playing at what I call off times. So firstly, let me explain what my off times are. Generally, I mean off as in the time when the server is less busy, which usually includes weekdays and not usually weekday mornings or mornings in general as most pro players usually play either at night or on weekends or the both combined together. So basically playing at these times gives you a lower chance of running into high ranked squads or squads that play very well so you have a higher chance of getting high scores. Playing at these times, as I said, there will be fewer players so you may be very lucky and get a bot match which pretty much guarantees you free trophies so that is basically why I like playing at off times even though I know some of you will say it's impossible because I understand you I am a college student myself and I have my own assignments but this is basically what I find to be effective of course this whole thing strongly depends on the server you are on I am only familiar with the Asia server, I do not know how the North American server and the European server function, it may be different over there, so yeah, this is just purely for the Asian server for what I have experienced. I decided to include a bonus tip which, again, some people won't support me, I know that. This is a tip which basically is use Roma. Again, why do I say this? Of course. I mean use Roma because the Roma is by far the ship I find the easiest to get a high damage, it survives well, it fights well, it moves fast, it hits hard and the list goes on, it's just that good. The Richelieu also is good, it doesn't die easily, however I find the Richelieu has a slightly lower damage as the guns tend to miss a little more often, so yeah, basically Use the Roma if you can. Now, 
I am going to be showing you guys a battle, one of the battles which, and no, this is not the battle that brought me into Legend League, but it's just a battle which I find there's some things I can share with you guys, so I will discuss why I did certain actions in the battle and what did I avoid to ensure I didn't get killed instantly. So here's the replay, but before we get into the replay though, I just wanted to analyze the matchmaking with you guys. Firstly, we can see that the enemy has a Roma and a Richelieu, and when I usually see this, I will try to focus fire one of them down first because both of them are very powerful ships and if they work together, they certainly can tear our team apart. The enemy also only has one DD, which is the Akizuki, and this is a domination game, which means on Trident, there's both A, B, and C cap. So I know the Akizuki will either be spawning up at A or C. So if I don't see the Akizuki rushing into the cap at, let's say I'm at C and it doesn't rush into C, I know it's definitely at A and I don't have to worry about it for the most part. I will also be pausing the replay from time to time to insert a picture which will be a map of arrows so I can show you guys what I do to maximize my damage. Now let's roll the replay. Basically, I am spawning at A, which is from my perspective the right side of the map. When playing domination with 3 capture points A, B and C, you usually want to capture both A and C instead of A and B or B and C. Now, I am going to pause the video to include a diagram so you guys can more easily understand what I mean and why I choose to do that. So here's the map. I am using the yellow arrows to represent what I prefer to do, the pink arrows to represent what I don't prefer to do and the reddish part as of course the enemy. Well you can see if you go to A and C and let's say you are pushing A and C, your team the part that is at the A cap manages to overrun the enemy and then you can turn towards the other side which is in this case turning to the right of the map and start pushing towards C which causes the enemies to get sandwiched between you and kill very quickly. Instead if you just go to A and B which of course you could do in some situations it might not be as good because you are not able to wrap the enemy around. If you just go to B it is possibly, I would say, the worst thing you could do as the enemy would just go to A and C and they would fire you from both sides and you would be sandwiched and therefore your team would die very quickly. So it's best personally for me to go A and C. So let's continue the replay. Our team's carrier is sending planes, spotting, so I am slowly moving towards A. Moving carefully right now because I don't want to rush straight into A and there because you can see the Akizuki just appeared so I know I have to be careful of both HE spam and torpedoes. I immediately used the precise aim rapid reload combo as the Mikhail Kutuzov is a really squishy ship and is showing so much broadside so of course I can't resist the temptation to give it broadside a good chunk. And guys if you want to complain Roma is OP please stop giving broadside as I can't help to shoot, not wanting to shoot at your broadside. Again, Mikhail Kutuzov moves, so I only hit 2. But my team has somehow gotten both B and C, no one's capturing A, and the enemy is basically focused in front of A. So I start to use another plan, which I am going to pause the replay soon. As you can see, I just shot at the Mikhail Kutuzov, got 2 citadels, you can just see how hard the Roma guns hit. and how soft the Mikhail Kutuzov's armor is. The enemy is mostly focused at A, the Roma is there, and I believe the Richelieu is behind, so I am going to use another part of my plan. And I'm going to pause the replay now and put another picture onto the screen. Okay, so here's the map. As you can see, most of the enemy is concentrated behind the A cap, so instead of rushing them head on, because the problem is if you rush them head on, you are going to be fighting in an, what's that called? With an, there's no advantage to anyone, you are both going to just be shooting each other from the front. And if you push forward, let's say if I push into A in this situation, I would be considered overextending and therefore they would focus fire me and bring me down very quickly. So instead of doing that, I decide to push into the B cap as you can see from the arrow. The enemy is where I marked it, so when I push into the B cap, you can see the green arrows which I drew 
those will be the, the arrows which indicate the direction of the shells I can fire. So while they are engaged with fighting my teammates, which are opposite them at the A cap, I can crossfire them and hit their broadsides as if they are angled towards my teammates, they won't be able to angle towards me. And if they try to angle towards me, my teammates will get a chance to hit their broadsides. So personally, I feel taking up a center position is good in this kind of scenarios. Another benefit of the center position is, let's say my teammates at C need assistance, I can easily turn across to C and provide them the help they need. So basically, a center position gives you a chance to shoot across the map and hit the enemy and they're showing their broadside and also assist your teammates easily by moving quickly to the position where they need support. Also, I wanted to mention on this map, Trident, Battleships work really well, especially higher tiered ones in the center positions because as you can see my gun range covers so much of the map and by the time I am in the center position, I can hit pretty much anything at any part of the map as long as my guns are pointed at them. Now let's continue the replay. So I am starting to push towards the center position. I just chunked the Akizuki with 5 shells which deal a decent amount of damage to destroyers even though it's just AP. Our Lo Yang is in B, being targeted by the carrier, and our carrier, I'm not sure why he's not sending fighters, but never mind, I'll just push straight into B and hold the cap myself. As you can see, the Richelieu is bowing forward, and I already can see the Richelieu's broadside. But here I decide to shoot the Shogaku, so because I want the Shogaku to get damaged and stop targeting the Lo Yang and target me instead, but the Lo Yang gets torped and dies. So, yeah, basically, shooting the Shokaku wasn't the best idea because she's really angled, so I only got a bit of damage. But at least I'm getting into the cap. The Richelieu is reversing and trying to bow to ensure I can't hit the flank, but that has helped my teammates as she can't shoot my teammates from that far. The enemy Roma is now showing a lot of broadside to me. I am pinging for plane support because the enemy carrier is going to shoot me and I get chunked from the front by a North Carolina because occasionally you still can get startled in the Roma. I take down the enemy Roma, but now I am being targeted by a North Carolina and both North, I'm sorry, more like the, the North Carolina and the Shokaku at the same time. So I take the Shokaku torps. Luckily, Roma's torpedo protection is 30 plus percent, so it means I can take quite a lot of torpedoes, especially aircraft torpedoes since they don't hit too hard. I am pinging for backup because I need fighter support, but the fighters are stuck at the Richelieu, which means I will be on my own. Luckily, the North Carolina got hit pretty hard, so another salvo and the North Carolina will be going down. And there goes the North Carolina, my second kill. Again, pinging for backup, but our carrier's fighters are locked onto the enemies, so I am not going to get help from the carrier to defend me from the planes, and you can see that how trash Roma's AA is. I decide to fire at the Shokaku since she's in range and I want her to stop harassing me as it's getting annoying. However though, no citadel hits, which is a little annoying. So yeah, basically, I continue shooting at the Shokaku, activate precise aim, and hit the Shokaku again. However, the Shokaku dies, it gets killed by our Enterprise, and the only target left is the Richelieu, and my guns are almost reloaded, so I finally decide to turn around, take a shot, and the Richelieu gets killed by me. Sorry guys, if I still told your kill. But that's basically how it goes. So, as I recapped, I went to the center position so I could crossfire the enemies and cause massive damage to them by firstly breaking their formation so they could not angle and force my teammates back and also chunking them from the side and taking them out quickly. So as you can see I utilized 5 of the things I talked about today and to make a quick recap the first is to get a high score so you can get more trophies the second is personally I like to use more battleships or use battleships so I can easily score more damage. The third is play at the fixed tier which you like. For me it's tier 8. The fourth is to squad with friends which I didn't do in this video because I had no friends online at the moment but squad with friends is better because you can get more reliable teammates that way. The fifth and the last tip is going to be 
playing at a time of the day where it's less busy so you can easily get more less of skill or let's say beginner opponents so you don't have to fight so hard and that basically brings us to the end of the video if you guys want to know what build i use for the roma check out my previous video which i will link in the video description down below this channel is also about to hit 100 subscribers so if you guys could help me and press the subscribe button i'll appreciate it very much as you probably have noticed there's no intro in this video and this is because i am making a new intro which i will be releasing at 100 subs so stay tuned so if you guys found this video helpful you enjoyed watching it please don't forget to spam the like button and subscribe to my channel for more future content if you guys want me to showcase any ship or talk about anything in particular please don't forget to tell me in the comment section down below i would like to hear from you that's all for now my name's HL and I'll see you guys next time.